Shalom, shalom, chabarim, shalom. This is Yadin, Yadin ben Chaya. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari LOJ, Society of His Majesty, the Lion of Judah, right here, here, here. We like to heal up right here for this um, 23rd of April here in this year, coming to the Shabbat, the fulfillment here of um, Pesach of the first of the three times in the year where all the males of Yisrael are to appear, right, in the place where he who be who he be sets his name, the Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. And for us in the Brit Chadasha, right, in the Yehudi sense of the Brit Chadasha, Robeinu Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know, um, so here, 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 <laughs> a lot to share right here. First of all, Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford was speaking of Rabbi Arnold Josiah, Josiah, very, very important Israelite king named Josiah. And as we meditate, as we meditate on the works of our patriarchs and the matriarchs, especially with this Earth Day right here, 145th, I think the 145th, if our math, if our math is correct. He was born in 1877, speaking about Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, first of the black Yehudi, of the resurrected Judahites, Ethiopian Hebrews, and I and I Israelites, Rabbi in the Americas and of the Caribbean. He was born in 1877, and he had repatriated, as we would say, repatriated or immigrated, right? He had aliyed. Right, east of the river now, the Aliyah, Hebraically, Judaically, that's returning to the land. The Aliyah, Aliyah, one of the forms of Aliyah, literally going up, right, as the mountains round about Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, mountains round about Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So, very, very important, Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, right, and we'd like to just note that here for the record. You know, we, the black Jews of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, we Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews, Rastafari Yisrael. So here, 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 very, very important patriarch, you know, of our patriarchs, our righteous patriarchs. Because you hear folks talking about bunning and, you know, doing away with the patriarchy. You must be talking about white supremacy, pseudo-patriarchy or white racism patriarchy. Yeah, do away with that. Do away with all the lies, right? And death to black and white down presses. So if some black man living in the image, the bun it, bun it. But here, this is really speaking of our roots right here. There's a lot to say about what they call Judaism. We like to reason on that more because there's some of I and I um, namesakes, fellow namesakes, you know, Rastas and Rastafari that somehow seem to be confused when we speak about the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, Judah. We speak about Ethiopia and the roots, the 3,000 plus years, 3,600 years plus, you know, 3,000 year, as Barhana Selassie said, you know, um, can't wipe away so easily, you know, I and I history, even though much has gone on right, to, um, to confuse it, right? And we have to take responsibility first and foremostly. You know, a lot of our fellow Israelites of some of the other camps, like the One West and other camps, and many of them are doing, we can say, you know, may, 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 may Hashem, you know, may Jehovah, may he, may he bless, you know, and may he receive their good works and of their good works in putting forward some of the basics, you know, of who we are. Once lost, now found, black and brown people, the sheeple of the Beit Yisrael, we the Beit Israel of the West. We have to recognize what role, you know, our own people had in our own captivity. You know, we have to just recognize that. It's, it's an important fact right there. And when we're speaking about Rabbi Arnold Josiah, in fact, Josiah, let's just touch on the name Josiah here. We have some, um, some, some that we prepared, you know, we did a, some research, right? Some research, this is him as another picture of um, Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, one of the first of the, you know, we say the resurrected, you know, and resurrection is a, is a Yehudi, is a Israelite, is a biblical, you know, theme. Resurrection. A lot of the, the themes that are thought to be Christian themes, right, they really 
emanate, so to speak, <laughs> you know, from the Yehudi and, and the Yehudim, right? As Rabbeinu Yeshua HaMoshiach even so said to the Samaritan woman, he said that y'all worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, of the Yehudim. So we're speaking about the Jews, the Judahites, especially the black Jews of the first century time and coming from the roots, the lion of the tribe of Judah. I think this is him here with his um, Isha, with his wife, his woman, and also heal up to first uh, international vice president, duly elected, um, Ras Obadiah. Um, like him to have a reasoning with him and he can share hopefully some more on, um, as he calls it, his angel, you know, the, the, the matriarch, speaking of um, Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, his wife, right? Um, we could say Mrs. Ford, um, because of history, learning our history, because they went to Ethiopia. It's interesting because um, he repatriated or immigrated to Ethiopia, I think roughly around the 1920, late 29 or 30, by 1930, right? And there's a lot of research that is out there that's being rediscovered or uncovered and like to share and highlight some of those aspects of our history. First of all, here we have the Universal Ethiopian Anthem right here, 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 right? The words by Burrell and Ford. Music by Arnold J. Ford, as you can just zoom in right here, you can see this right here. Now, this is important, especially to ionize Rastafari when we talk about the roots, right? The real roots of Rastafari originate Right, look to the east, look to the east, or the Misrak to Melkatu, look to the east, right, where Moshiach would enter into his temple, right, from the east to the west, right, like the lightning shining from the east to the west. So, Rastafari, the roots of Rastafari, is in Ethiopia and amongst the Israelites of Ethiopia. Right? and based on the roots of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the roots of David. But here we have the Universal Ethiopian, what's known as the Universal Ethiopian Anthem. Do you know about the Universal Ethiopian Anthem? I think every Rastaman, right, Taman, right, to be faithful, trusting, and true, right, every Rastaman right, should know, right? Every goodie should know, right? Every Rastaman should know because this is, what we call the Ethiopian anthem amongst many of I and I, but it's not the Ethiopian anthem, the imperial Ethiopian anthem, this anthem, but this is the anthem of I and I, the diaspora, right, in the West. And this anthem has continually been chanted and, and sung, right, and recited by the called chosen and faithful Rastafari. So this is you know, Ethiopia, the land of our fathers, the land where the Elohim, where the gods love to be. So we have the words right here by Burrell, right? Burrell and Ford, and the music here by Arnold J. Ford. Now here, this was the national anthem of the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, founded and established by Marcus Messiah Garvey and the African Communities League. Right, to really see where the um, correspondence, so to speak, right, of Rastafari, right, the Beta Israel here of the West, right, Ethiopia, right, Ainai Divine Heritage, the Israelites, right, of Ethiopia, where this link has come together. And also the Garveyite, right, Marcus Messiah Garvey, who many of the elders had taught Ainai and showed Ainai, and we got to um, prove. Right, that as truth, right, prove it to be true that truly Marcus Messiah Garvey is likened very, very strongly, scripturally, biblically, historically, prophetically, with our black John the Baptist, as one can say. I want to say black in the sense of that black consciousness, right, you know, based on the Bible and the scripture, very, very important. And of course, the Ethiopia connection, as we can see right here in the universal Ethiopian anthem, right? The words, so the words by Borel and Ford and the music, the musical director, Arnold Josiah Ford, right? 
aka Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford. So his role with the Commandment Keepers, Congregation of Elohim Chaim, of the Living God, the Living Elohim, as well as the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews is very, very crucial. And others of our early resurrected, we can say, um, you know, patriarchs and, and our sages, you know, and scholars, those who really are at the roots, right, of this regeneration, right? So we have the regeneration, like being born again, that regeneration. As we mentioned, Judaically, Hebraically, right, the themes of um, resurrection are Hebraic, Judaic, Biblical themes, Right? And yes, we find it articulated by Robeinu Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? speaking about our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Yes, yes. So here, 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 this is this, looking at the beginning, right? How did it begin, right? And this is some of the earliest, um, some of the earliest beginnings, you know, coming up and out of the enslavement, right? And post-1865, you know, the Civil War and the Reconstruction, the turn of the 20th century, talking about the 1900s, and speaking about roughly 100 years ago, 100 years ago, speaking about the Roaring Twenties, as we are here in this new millennium, the 21st century, and this year right here, 2022, and the 23rd of April, right? Here we honor, right, and call to mind Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford. So here, 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 another, another um, view of the Universal Ethiopian Anthem. And the words are very telling too, right? The words are very, very telling. And the influence, right, of the royal order, the influence of our faith, the influence of Ha Torah, the influence of the of the um, Nabim, right, the prophets, right? Even the influence of the Brit Hadasha, the renewed covenant, is very much found within the words, right? The words and the music, but especially the words of the universal Ethiopian anthem. So we want to point that out, right, for the Rastafari, especially for the Rastafari, because it's the Rastafari called Chosen and Faithful, and particularly amongst Ayabingi, but amongst all the, we say the mansions, they may call themselves houses, right? But there's only one house, the Beta Rastafari, right? The Beta Rastafari, the Beta Israel, only one house. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So we can see this right here. This is a cover here of the Universal Ethiopian Hymnal. So there was a whole hymnal. Now, we don't recall seeing this entire hymnal. We might have seen, we know of the uh, Universal Ethiopian Anthem, no doubt that's a part of the hymnal, but we'd like to see, you know, full of full. So if anyone has this to even share, you know, one can link I and I to LOJS.org, LOJS.org, right? Or kind of send a heads up to RastafariJews at gmail.com, RastafariJews at gmail. Dot com. So right here, what it says down here, if we can read this, it says, um, composed by Arnold J. Ford, musical director at Liberty Hall, New York. I think it says 1920-something. Well, what does it say right here? A couple of dates are here. 1920, it seems like 19. It's, it's kind of blurred right there. But here it says, Rabbi of the Congregation, um, Beth Benai Abraham, NY, NYC. The congregation, um, was it Bet right? Benai? Is it Bet Benai? I think it's Bet Benai. I hope I have that correct. Like the right, the house of the sons of Abraham. Right? Rabbi of the congregation, the house of the sons of Abraham. If we read that there correctly. So here, 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 just looking over some of the historical work. So the link of our first, of the rise of our Yehudi, Jewish, Judaic, right? And the link with the lion of the tribe of Judah. See, that's significant, right? Because even though many of us focus on the curses or the consequences for disobedience in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 
you got to recognize the first 15 or so verses have the, the barakot, the blessings for obedience, right? And though the prophecy says that, you know, um, you know, many are called like few are chosen and many would go astray, right? There would still be a man to sit upon the throne of great King David, of Dawid HaMelech, of Negus Dawid, right? And that's the link right there, there, there with Rastafari, with Negustafari, with Kedemah, we had a upon the throne of great King David in that land, that land, that land. As Psalm 87 verse 4, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre, with Ethiopia, this man was born there, Zeulad Sham, this man was born there. Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to Elohim, right? Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Yisrael? So here, here we have another historical document. It's not that clear right here, but here we have um, um, it says kohol, kohol like kahal. When we say kahal, now kahal is interesting because kahal in the Hebrew sometimes spelt with a k, but it's a special k. It's a q sound. The kahal, or in some enunciations, the kohol, kohol, kahal, right? The kahal is the called out assembly, right? Like the, it means to gather, the gathering, the assembly, right? Wayak Ahel, there's a Torah reading and feeding and Moshe and he assembled, right? He assembled, he assembled the people and he also assembled the tabernacle, right? In the wilderness, we get the St. Stephen, right? Holy um, um, Kedusa Chaber Estefanos, he testifying in Acts of the Apostles in the Brit Chadasha, that the church in the wilderness, right, the church. Now, one might say, oh, the church, that's New Testament, that's Christianity. Well, we get to the Hebrew roots and we recognize that those who wrote and originally communicated the, the New Testament or the, or the New Testament scriptures were Hebrews, right? By and large, were Hebrews and were influenced by the Hebrews. In other words, we wrote our own things. Stop believing those lies that it was Vespasian and it was Titus and they, they learned so much about Judaism with J Josephus and they all planned together to write this. This is such nonsense, you know, but I guess ones who haven't studied, you know, studied for themselves, studied how Torah and studied. This is why we call ones and ones, you know, to the Rastafari Yeshiva on the Ian and the Ira. Check out Rastafari Israelites, the streaming at Rastafari Israelites as well. Right, like, share, and subscribe. So here we have the Kahal, right, or the Kahal Bet Benai Yisrael. In a direct translation into English, more or less, it will be like the church or the assembly of the of the house. Now, Bet is interesting. Bet it could be we got Bat, which is daughter, and Bet or Beth, Bait is house. Benai is like the sons of Yisrael incorporated here. It's located, what, 204 Lennox Road. So we're looking at this document here. I need to get a clearer copy, but just to show some of the historical documentation, this is like 19, I think this is 1945. Now, concerning Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, concerning him, it is said, Right, that after his immigration, immigration, right, he migrated, he aliyed, right, he went up to land, right, he went up to the, the Holy Land east of the River Nile. Because remember, Ethiopia and East Africa, especially east of the River Nile, is in that territory, according to Bereshi, Genesis chapter 15, that Hashem, that Jah, Jehovah, that the Lord, if you please, but that Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem had promised to the seed of Abraham, of Abraham. Remember the name of the first one it was the Benai Abraham, right? From the river of Egypt, which is the river of Tobia of Ethiopia, the river of inner Ethiopia, inner Africa, right? And the Euphrates. Oh, got something to show you. I showed it before. We're still going to seek to do a fuller, full video on it just to show how deep our Yehudi and Jewish or Judaic and Israelite roots go. I'm talking about we, the black people over here in the West that have been called by so many bywords. Right? Here, let's look at this right here. Now, this, I'd like to get this particular book, is in this particular book right here. Now, all of y'all don't buy up all the copies now, but if, hey, get it. Let's support you know, the research that's going on. It's called Black Land. 
Imperial Ethiopianism and African America by Nadia Nur Hussein. Now, I scanned it. There's, there's a kind of a limited view of it. You can scan it, but it seems like um, if Nadia is a sister, as I would take it to be, that like this woman, that she did a good, you know, a very interesting research. If it's not for anything other than having this in the book, <laughs> this right here, we got actually a video on this going into another aspect of it, right? Now, this is, has a copyright Princeton University Press. So just fair use, fair use right here, right? Um, now, this is part of our heritage. So, you know, if you know who we be, right? Represent the line of the tribe of Judah and this historical heritage. This is getting to the very roots when we start to speak about whether it is speaking about historical institutions, right? That are in need right, of the call, the chosen, the faithful to come together, to gather in the proper order, right, the, the principles, to keep the principles, what be the first principles of the oracles of God. Here we have the Lion of Judah Treaty between the King of Ethiopia and the United States, His Majesty Minyalik II, or Dagmawi Minyalik, Negusa Negesa Ethiopia, King of Kings of Ethiopia, to regulate commercial relations between the two countries. Now, I point this out here because I want one to look at the flags. Look at the flags. You see the lion of the tribe of Judah. No cross, no crown, right? You see the crown, you see the cross. You also will notice the two flags. One, we could say the Ethiopian flag on the left hand, but notice the one on the right hand. You see the one? Now, most ones will say, oh, look, that's the, that's the Jewish, that's the Israeli, that's the state of Israel flag. Well, before this was appropriated, some might claim misappropriated. We just say appropriate at this point, right? Before this was appropriate or adopted by the, you know, the state of Israel, right? In 1948, this document here, let's just get a time check on this document. This document here, it says signed at Addis Ababa, December 27th, if we're correct, 1903. Now, around the same time, there was a delegation of um, Afra, they used to call himself Afra, Afra, well, not African or any of that, but not even Afro, but Afra American, like as one word, Afra. Now it's interesting the Afra and the Afar part, right? As we get into the scripts and also do our own, you could say archaeology, you know, do our own anthropology on our peoples and our roots and related peoples, especially east of the river now. They had went forward, some Afro Americans had sailed forward to confer with the king of kings, the lion of the tribe of Judah, with, remember what it says in the prophecy that Dawid, that David will never lack a man to sit on his throne, All right? That's a, that's a key aspect of prophecy that many overlook or they kind of spiritualize, you know what I mean? They send it up into the skies, All right? They say, oh, the, the throne of David is up in the heavens. Can you show me a chapter and a verse in the scripture, Old Testament or New Testament for that, please? Mm. No, in fact, ask them, those who say that, who try to spiritualize the throne of David, you know, they try to spiritualize, and this is what we talk about counterfeit Christianity, trying to like spiritualize the throne of David when the prophecy says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, all right? Don't try to run away like, you know, after you die, the pie in the sky, heaven in the sky, because the Our Father prayer, if you really understand what you're saying, really tells us that, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, right? The earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof. It says that the righteous, they, the meek shall what? Inherit, right? Inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And all the serpents and the Bob, 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 the Babylonians, right? They will bite the dust, right? So right here, this was prompted by many of our own Judahite and Israelite people. I once lost, now found. Some of those who were some of the first of the resurrected, the resurrecting back in the early turn of the century. At the beginning, right, this treaty was signed at the beginning of the 20th century. Remember that word of his majesty, right? With faith, right? Courage in a just cause. David will still beat Goliath. A significant word right here. Is I'm happy that you're here to take this picture of me in my palace garden in Addis Ababa. But there's a point of that, 
right? So that everyone in the world, in the world, in the world can testify, right? Or will bear witness that it will be told to them whether they want to say yay, yay, or nay, nay, right? Everyone should know. As it says, even in Revelation, it says, all I will see him. How will all I see him? All around the world, especially if you believe in the globe philosophy. How is every eye going to see him? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, the camera, that eye, the eye of the camera. You see, the eye of the camera. That's why he says, I'm happy that you're here to take this picture of me in my palace garden in Addis Ababa. All right. Uh, faith, courage, and a just cause. So notice the flag. Let's zoom in on the flag right here. Now, in the flag right here, we have Sion. Note that the flag says Sion. And also 